Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another machine, another Think Center. So, if you if you hadn't guessed already, the past couple of weeks has been a lot of these Lenovo machines, and that's because I had a a gentleman working in a local business who was cycling out old equipment from their uh, business. When you've got <coughs> <coughs> Machines that are uh, no longer serviceable, like, like uh, the company you bought it from can't do warranty servicing or maintenance servicing on it anymore. You can't really have those in production. So it goes offline, and these would have ended up in the scrapyard, but gentlemen happened to see one of my ads online on Kijiji or Garage, Garage Sale or Facebook or something and said, hey, listen, I got all these machines. Can you use them? And absolutely, I can. So uh, we've been working through these getting them up and running and and uh, just showing off what they are so we have here this think center this is an m81 machine type 7518 this would be in the second generation core i series machines and uh, we'll take a look at how it's been built um I will notice like when you look at the different generations of some of these business machines, the way that things change inside the mechanicals sometimes doesn't make sense to me. Um, I took a look at the um, another model that we had, which was a Gen 1 Core I, and it was a really well-built machine in terms of internally, the, the tool list design, getting access to everything. This one you'll see it's a little bit a little bit harder to work with in my opinion um so here we go we'll take a look at the front end of the system pretty standard you've got your um optical drive here power or power button and your button to open up the optical drive pair of usb ports and microphone and headset as well as our intake area here there'll be a system fan on the inside uh, like some of the other small form factor machines and desktop machines of this era, you'll see these rubber nubs here, and then also on the, I don't know, you can call them both bottoms. It's a double bottom. Um, and that way you could stand it vertically or flat, depending on the orientation you liked in your office. Spinning around to the rear of the machine here, power supply access. We have our VGA and display port. We also have our serial port rest of our usb ports our gigabit ethernet and our audio ports and you'll notice um, that there's a blackout here where this case may have had a different motherboard that may have supported standard ps2 connections but there obviously wouldn't be on this one because we don't use those any we don't use those silly ps2 ports once we get into this generation of products haha -ha. um you'll notice this uh blue clip here this is the release to open up the system door. So it actually will trigger something in the lid that goes all the way to the front of the system and releases a latch at the front. So instead of on other models where I've seen they've got the buttons on the sides, this one they've got this clip, but it still opens at the front of the unit. So I'll spin it around again, and you'll see what I mean. I have to pull the clip, and then I can lift the lid, and then we get up and running here. And from here, we're going to move the camera, and I'll get the top-down view, and we can start disassembling, and I can show you some of the weird stuff that goes on when we take this, this guy apart. Okay, so here we are with top-down view, and what we need to do to get access to everything is there's a couple different sections. So the first thing we have to do is remove the hard drive. Pretty simple. We push this over here. That will release the pressure on the side panel with the hard drive array. It's a little bit tight and you still have to kind of work it back and then that'll come off. And then that's your three and a half inch hard drive, in this case a 500 gig Western Digital with our SATA connections. We'll move that off to the side. You'll see there's a fan here for blowing some air and we see some of the cable routing for the front panel connectors. Now this is where it gets wonky. The next piece for me to do is to push this clip here in and that's going to let me lift up the optical drive but for me to lift up the optical drive it doesn't 
quite stay. It's a little bit weird. Um, <laughs> so I'll move this to the side now on a little bit of an angle here. And and now we can see the rest of the system board. So we've got our power supply. We've got this nice finned plastic ballast system set up over top of the processor. And this is really good for, you know, converging airflow. We want to make sure we get as much air blowing in and coming right down for this fan to suck down and blow onto the processor. So that's good. We've got our four memory dim slots here. And then we've got power connector, our battery. We have four, four SATA connectors. I'm not sure where else I'm going to hook up SATA devices inside of this system. And I think this is just another case where this system board would have been used on multiple form factors. So this board would have actually gone into the tower based model of, you know, this generation of Lenovo Think Center. And in the tower model, there would have been room for extra drive. So that would have happened as well. Uh, and then we've got our expansions. We've got two PCI slots. And then we have two PCIe slots. There's a by one and a by 16. So by one would be, you know, for a Wi-Fi card or something, uh, moving into something that's PCIe based instead of an old PCIe card or PCI card, sorry. And then we've got our by 16 card for us to be able to install a GPU if we want to go with something better than the onboard graphics uh, into the system. So um, I believe actually on this um, series of machines, there was a Radeon uh, HD 5450 card that could have been available as an option. So I'm not sure if that was available only on the tower model or if there was a low profile version of that card available for this as well, but it could have been. Um, also looking on other free ports on this one, there is another free header for USB that's already on the system board here. And then there looks like there's some rough-ins for a third USB header that haven't been put onto the board. So again, an option there that that could have been something that would be uh, available on different form factors using this same system board. So we can get this clipped back down again. Piece one, and piece two, not too terrible in terms of serviceability, but you know, the previous generation M90P that we looked at a couple weeks ago, um, you know, seemed to be a little bit better in terms of serviceability than this one. Um, and this is a newer model. All right, let's get this thing uh, plugged in and boot it up into Windows and take a look at what's got under the covers. We are ready to go, powering on. Pretty decent in terms of the volume of the fan inside the system for there being two system fans plus a power supply fan in that small space. It's not too bad. So as I mentioned, this was a second generation core i system uh, you could have had anything as low as an i3 2100 um, this has got an i3 sticker on it so i think this actually might have a 2100 which is uh 3.1 gigahertz which is pretty decent in terms of frequency performance but obviously it's going to be lower in core count um, but it could have gone all the way up to having a supported i7 uh, 2600 processor in it uh, so that's 3.4 gigahertz, obviously. And then this being a business machine, you're not going to see the ability to be able to do uh, overclocking. Uh, the system board, the BIOS, won't support uh, unlock. Well, it will support an unlock processor, but it won't support overclocking of a processor. Um, it's not built for not built for that. Um, but you can get you know a reasonably powerful for the time of second generation Core i processors into this system uh, to be able to run some stuff. If you ever wanted to take one of these older business machines. Yeah, you get to get a good deal on or whatever and you want to convert it into a gaming pc a low-end gaming pc uh, in today's uh scenarios uh, it's something that you could do all right here we are in terms of connectivity so again uh we do have the i3 2120 so not the 2100 processor this is the 21 20. This is a 3.3 gigahertz processor, two cores, four threads, actually a pretty decent processor on its own. Uh, you know, that's 
fully capable of handling some pretty serious business requirements. I've got 4 gig of RAM installed in here. That's a 4 1 gig chips that I installed into this system. Now, as far as the architecture is concerned on this one, uh, it does say that I do have the ability to support up to uh, 4 gig DIMMs, I believe. So we can get 16 gig worth of RAM installed onto this machine. And then again, you could get a low pro video card if you needed something a little bit more powerful. <coughs> As far as storage goes, we've got this 500 gig SATA disk drive. There are obviously the additional two ports on here. So if you wanted to do some finagling with the front end of the system and put some uh, smaller uh, drives in there, get some 2.5 inch drives in there, some SSDs, maybe some uh, low profile storage adapters for M.2 or M SATA or something that you can clamp in on the back of the machine and then they still plug in through the SATA signal cables. There's obviously some stuff you can do uh, given the motherboard cap capability but still keeping in mind the capacity of a one of these small form factor designs. So that about wraps it up for this look at this ThinkCenter M81 machine. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope uh, as always you're staying safe and healthy in these uncertain times and we will catch you in the next one.